expected to be more aggressive, higher rates for longer is the mandate of the Fed. So up until that takes place, I guess the market is going to be within that range itself, 17,400 to 800. The good part is that uh, there are a lot of these beaten down stocks that are making an attempt to come back, whether it's the Adani Group stocks, whether it's a couple of the infrastructure names as well. Uh, so all is not lost. But yes, the rally that we saw in the last th uh, three days, that has come to a halt for now. Okay, well, maybe just about a breather at this point in time mm -hmm. for the markets. But uh, let's get talking to the first company that we have on our radar this afternoon. Kaplan Point is the one that we're talking about. The company in its latest exchange notice has said that they have received a US FDA approval for thiamine hydrochloride injection. Hi thiamine uh, hydrochloride basically treats vitamin B1 deficiency. Uh, not only that, the company, including this approval, has received th three approvals and all of them injectables just in the past month, one month from the US drug regulator. To discuss this and more in terms of the business, we have with us uh, Vivek P, who is the COO of Kaplan Point Labs. Vivek, hi, welcome to the show. Well, you know, we haven't spoken to you post your Q3, Q3 numbers. But I wanted to start by discussing these three approvals that you've received in the injectable space just in the past one month. They're not that big in terms of market size, but it's probably pointing to a lot of approvals possibly coming through and a pipeline of drugs that we might see for Kaplan Point. So tell us, what can we expect going forward? Yeah, so uh, we're quite happy with the recent approvals. Of course, there was a bit of a lull period in the last one year where we didn't uh, receive too many approvals, but that uh, was a blessing in disguise for us because we actually uh, milked a lot more out of the existing approvals that we have. We've been consistently gaining in market share with the products that were already approved. But now that with the new approvals coming through, I think uh, we can really kick on uh, into extra gear from here. Um, like you said, these are not very large uh, products that are getting approved, but that's sort of within our sweet spot. We don't want to uh, go after only products that are over a billion dollars in revenue or anything like that. We want to have a, a wide portfolio of uh, uh, products. We Our offering needs to be uh, broad-based against multiple uh, therapies so that uh, anything that goes through a hospital would need to go through uh, the range of portfolio that we're developing at this point. Okay. Uh, Vivek, hi, good afternoon and thanks for being with us on the channel. Earlier, I think you had aimed for achieving 200 crores of sales by the end of FY23. Are you on track to do that? And what about FY24? Considering that, you know, you're sounding very optimistic, what could the growth in FY24 look like? Uh, we are certainly on target uh, to complete uh, 200 crore plus this year. Uh, you'll have to wait for a few more weeks and see. But uh, for the next year, we've set ourselves a bit more of an audacious target where we feel that we can still grow another 50% um, uh, with the approvals that are likely to come through over the next uh, few months. I think we should be in a, a position to close uh, next year at about close to 300 crores in uh, capital steroids revenue. Okay, so 300 crores is what you're probably projecting for Kaplan Sterile's. Uh, can you tell us what might be the biggest risk to Kaplan Sterile's in the U.S. market now? Because, uh, you know, I was just having a discussion with somebody with regards to U.S. price pressure and they said that it is significant. Uh, what is the kind of price pressure that you're probably facing in the injectables market, in the markets that you are currently in in the U.S.? And uh, what might be uh, the expectations on U.S. price pressure going forward as well? Yeah. So in terms of pricing, to be honest with you, for many of the products where we are working on, uh, you know, already it has bottomed out to a certain extent. In fact, uh, you'll be surprised to find that many of the products that we are already in the market with and some of the new approvals, we start seeing a little bit of an uptick in uh, pricing. You know, and also what uh, constitutes to a pricing pressure for a larger company might not really be what we would call as uh, low margin products or anything like that, because obviously we come from a smaller base as well, and uh, our expenses, et cetera, are different to some of these larger players, you know. So overall, I would say that, uh, you know, if you net off our uh, uh, EBITDA outside of the R&D and many of the facility fees that we are paying, um, our EBITDA and margins are very similar to our parent companies, which is already at a slightly healthy level, I would say, you know. So. Uh, pricing pressure is there. I would not say no, but I would say that many of these products that uh, we are talking about pricing pressures is largely bottomed out. Okay, pricing pressure on many of your products is largely bottomed out. 
Just to come back to the numbers that you were giving us, Vivek, you said you'll end FY23 with 200 crores <laughs> and FY24 with 300 crores. So that's a 50% jump that you're looking at in revenues between FY23 and 24. Will it largely be organic or are you looking at some inorganic uh, route as well? Because you do have cash of over 700 crores on your books. Right. So whatever that we are talking about is uh, organic. Um, see, you'll also have to understand that we have been significantly uh, investing into R&D for quite some time now. Right. So what you're seeing in terms of growth, obviously, on a on a lower base with regards to capital storage, that's why last year to this year is likely to be about 70 percent and then 50 percent, hopefully next year is is uh, is big. It's, it's the fruits of all uh, that we've invested into over the last uh, four to five years. And Hopefully, we see uh, more of that going forward from here, you know, because we've also been expanding capacities as well. So this is not just the R&D uh, coming into play. This is our consistent compliance record, expansion of capacities, and uh, some of these products that are getting approved that we filed over the last few years. Okay. Uh, can you just give us a sense mm -hmm. in terms of what the compliance status of your plants would be from where the injectables are filed? Yeah, so we uh, are still waiting for an audit uh, to happen post uh, uh, post COVID. Uh, the good thing is we might be in the good books, uh, I guess, because they've not yet prioritized our plant. But some of these very large plants as well that are into injectables also haven't been audited recently. But the mantra is that we need to be uh, in a state of anytime readiness when it comes to uh, uh, US or any other inspections for that matter. You know, mm. so. I would say that, uh, you know, the sooner they come, the better, but uh, we need to be in the state of any time audit readiness. Okay, so you haven't mm. been audited since, say, 2019, 2020. Is that correct? Correct, correct. And we're not alone. I think there is a significant backlog with regards to uh, uh, FTO audits. And, uh, and, and obviously, recently, all of them are unannounced audits or very short announced audits, right? So mm. we don't really have an idea of when it will happen. Okay. All right, Vivek, thank you for stopping by and speaking to us. Uh, and all the best with your growth plans. That is Kaplan Point. They're looking at completing this year with around 200 crores on their books in terms of revenues. That could grow to 300 crores in FI24, which is a 50% jump. And they're saying that a large part of it, almost all of it, will come through the organic route itself. So that's Kaplan Point Labs. Let's do one thing. Let us now get a look back on the markets and tell you what's been happening there. So far, so good in terms of a move on the market. I mean, it's still down, but not out, you'd have to say. Uh, down about 70 odd points. Let's take a quick break on that note. Uh, here's a quick programming note. On the 14th of March, CNBC TV 18 will host what will be India's largest summit on gender parity in Delhi. Women leaders from all walks of life will come together to brainstorm and help take decisive steps to bridge the gender equality, inequality that exists in India and across the world. The event starts at 4.30 p.m. on the 14th of March and you can catch all the live action right here on CNBC TV 18.